Welcome, everyone. Um, today, we are going to talk a little bit to Ron Shero about some of the trades, uh, the longer term trades that he has done in um, some of his bigger accounts. You know, publicly, we have shared a lot of his uh, scalping results in the small account. But today, we want to go over for our members and some of the newer users, um, some of the results. We're not really going to be talking specific numbers here, but we're going to be focused on the strategy and the process that got Ron into these trades because there's a lot of people that have been asking us about if we could give a little bit more information on the trades such as the Amazon and the Costco. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Ron, I think what would be very interesting for uh, both old and new users is this is this is not something new, right? This is like not some new trade or new strategy that you came up with like this year or the past few months. It's like this is this is this is your thing. This is what you've been doing, right? So can you tell us a little bit about like the background and the need for you creating this strategy or the strategies that you have and that you employ into the market? So a long, long time ago, and yes, um, a long time ago, I went I, when I was similar to like how Ozzy in the room is a, um, is a 30 something. I too was a 30 something and just throwing money around, um, mm -hmm. at, at options. And I, I did really, really, really well. And I was trying to go from, um, a place of, you know, about where Ozzy is at, um, uh, big size wise to get to a place where, you know, I would never have to work again. Right. So, um, I was trying to turn, you know, a couple of million into, you know, 30, 40, 50, a hundred. Uh, I, I thought I could do that. And then the nine 11 tragedy happened. And when that happened, um, I got wiped out. So, mm -hmm. um, and it was at that, at that age and for the income that I made, that was a, a, a significant, um, amount of money so it was like 1.6 million wiped out and it was it was very difficult to recover from so mm. that kind of led me to well wh what do i you know i don't know what i don't know so how how did it go so badly Wh was there anything i could have done to protect myself from um a black swan event such such mm -hmm. as that and, and since the 9 11 event there have been other events and there will always be some event that you never see happening right or coming so how can i how can i not be um net long or if i am net long how do i how do i get myself out of the way of of just completely getting run over and that's mm -hmm. what brought me to well i i found a um it took me a long time, but I found a mentor who uh, was a market maker and his whole um, philosophy on how to handle long-term positions was, listen, the best way to do that is is something called stock replacement. And what that meant mm -hmm. was buying a leap. So for example, um, you know, you can be, you can have a long-term focus on whatever it is that, you know, whatever name you love, right? Um, you know, gosh, I really like Amazon or I really, you know, in, in currently Amazon and Costco, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or whatever it is, you know, can, can I, can I participate in that long-term um, and replace it with stock the reason or with, with leaps? The reason being is because the leap is going to cost you a fraction of what, the underlying security is going to cost, right? So, mm -hmm. um, if I want to buy a thousand shares of uh, of Costco in today's, I don't, let me just pull up a quote on Costco right now. If I want to buy a thousand shares of Costco, um, it's going to cost me. The stock is trading at seven hundred and twenty six forty five, so I've got to lay out seven hundred and twenty six thousand dollars to control mm -hmm. a thousand shares. Whereas if I want to trade the long term option on it. Um, you know, it's, it's going to cost me a fraction of that. It's going to cost me whatever it is, a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I want to do that, I'm going to buy 10 contracts. So I'm going to put out, you know, let's say $150,000. But what it does is it reduces my capital risk. So if I have less money, I can still participate in the size that I want to participate in. But I'm also mm -hmm. protected from the capital risk because I don't have 700,000 out there. I've got a hundred or 150,000 out there, right? Mm -hmm. So 
number one, I already was immediately, I gravitated to that because I was like, well, if I don't have a lot of money and I, I, I want to be in something like that, uh, and I want to participate the same way the equity holder would, how can I do that? And, and that's where leaps that, that was the original idea was okay. That number one, that's my first, um, risk management parameter, right? The leap is, is so giving the leap is the, the number risk. one, the foundation. That was that was the foundation, and the way that I the way that I work um, and and try to tell uh, and teach everybody through the master course and in 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 day to day is hey I always look at the big picture first, and the mm -hmm. reason I look at the big picture first is is from that leap strategy right that's a long term yeah. strategy, so I'm always looking at okay what is what is whatever it is that I'm looking at like Costco, um, what does that look like on the the big picture. Well, I've got to start mm -hmm. with a weekly mm -hmm. chart, right? So a weekly chart for me relates to a leap position and a daily chart also is that leap position, right? That helps me establish things like, is this particular equity um, in an uptrend? Is it in a downtrend? Uh, is it quality? And, and obviously what I'm looking for is quality at a discount because I don't want to buy something long term yeah. at its highs right i want to find something mm -hmm. that that's at its you know that's that's at a, a point where um it's going to give me an opportunity for upside so for example yeah. the one that's on the radar right now is aluminum mm -hmm. right it's aluminum. so but, you know aluminum, yeah. aluminum is it's like this is what i look for so this is so this is long term and then once i find something long term then mm -hmm. I start to do other things around that position. So, okay. you know, the leap is, is what I refer to as the post. That's the main mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. the position. And then mm -hmm. trading the post means, okay, can I trade around that position short term? So mm -hmm. you are, you know, for example, in an, like in an Illumina, I would be long-term long looking for short-term opportunities to trade around that long-term position for several reasons. One is to get it paid for, the leap paid for. Once mm -hmm. the leap is paid for, then I can make a decision as to, do I want to make that, that leap position bigger? Do I want to add to it? Do mm -hmm. I have free cash flow to add to it? Or do I simply just want to sit there and stack cash over however long of a time frame I want to be involved with something like in Illumina. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and for the for the shorter term trades where you're trading around the post, that could be scalping the calls or the puts. It could be selling a condor. It could be selling the spread. It could be like any type of short term trade. Like you kind of dabble in all the strategies, all the time frame and different strategies all at the same time, right? Or are you kind of yes. like picking and choosing when to uh, deploy different types of strategies. Yeah, so that I mean, that's a great question. So there's kind of a checklist of mm -hmm. um, the, the level of aggressiveness, if you will, mm -hmm. that you trade around the post. So, for example, the, the 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 place that I start that's most conservative to trade around a position is to look at, hey, has the stock reached an area of resistance? And if it has, mm -hmm. can I write a weekly against my leap position? to collect decaying premium. So mm -hmm. for example, um, Amazon is a long-term position right now. And currently Amazon keeps bumping its head at the 180 area. Every time mm -hmm. Amazon gets to 180 or close to 180, I can write a weekly at the money 180. That's an aggressive mm -hmm. write. I can write slightly out of the money, let's say 185. That's a more conservative write. The other thing I can do is say, hey, it's it's at this area of resistance. Mm. And now can I be more aggressive short term? Can I just buy puts? Can I just be directional on mm -hmm. a trade as opposed to, you know, a right is a little more conservative because you're collecting that decaying premium. And if it breaks through that area, you can yeah. buy that short call back, right? And and be done with the trade, or you can buy the short call back to close, and then you can immediately buy back the same strike to open and ride directionally short term. Plus, if mm. you're in the leap, you're getting the appreciation in the leap to the upside as well. So there's a lot of different nuances and tweaks to that position to that core position. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think one thing that this strategy like captures beautifully is that it might be necessary at times to play, you know, 
strategies that playing over different time frames because what i have found happening to me is like i'll see something that's supposedly working like let's say it's like swings or mini swings in the options market right and then all of a sudden yes. you can't really swing anymore and then you start to scalp and then you focus on scalping and then scalping stops working it's really hard to know when to employ the correct strategy so it's almost like you have to employ both at the same time because you don't know which one is going to work and then you know hopefully the one that works works so well that it could you know pay and make up for some of the losses for the for the other time frame but like yeah. i find myself have found myself in the past trying to kind of predict which strategy is going to work over the next few months is it going to be a long-term swing or is it going to be intraday scalping and and this stuff is very hard to predict. So it's like almost like yeah. you have to position yourself for both. Try to get a long-term position if you think there's like a good environment for, for a long-term position and then also scalp yeah. on top of it. Well, and it's it's very similar to how I would look at a chart technically, right? Again, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. I look, at the, I look at the big picture first and then, so that's a weekly, then a daily. And then from the daily, mm -hmm. you know, you come into a four hour, um, you know, a one hour uh, or a 65 minute, a 30 minute, a 10 minute, a five minute, a one minute. And then, and yeah. then I'm doing things like, oh, okay, now that I know what the big picture is, and am I, am, am I at an area of support or resistance technically? And if I am, can I find an advantage short term? So now that that says to me, okay, go look at level two and are there buyers and sellers, which direction, you know, what mm -hmm. I want to be. So I can be long term long in a position and I, you know, short term, I can look at it and say, it looks terrible right here, right now. For example, mm. Costco has been weak after its earnings, but it's still in a long-term uptrend, right? Pardon the brief interruption, but I just want to remind you that the final live Sang Lucci Master Course ever starts on March 25th. If you're ready to put in the work, we can make you into an unbreakable trader. You can learn more and get access to a bunch of free bonus content over at sanglucci.com forward slash MC. And that link is in the description as well. All right, back to the video. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're, 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 you're just because you're long-term long doesn't mean that you can't be short-term negative on something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So in the short yeah. term, okay. look at garbage, like... But I, I still, in for example, in the Costco, because of where we purchased it and because we've managed the position by rolling the strike up over time, mm -hmm. you have you have so much profit that's built in that even if you're wrong in your short-term position, it, it doesn't really impact you because you've already yeah. collected those profits along the way, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I, it's strategy building, building these and, and connecting all of these things is, is what works. So when you see people say, mm -hmm. oh, well, short term, you know, scalp, you, you suck. Well, it's like, well, okay. The short term scalp account granted has not been performing well, <laughs> but what people don't see is they don't see what's happening in those leap positions and in all of these things feed each other over time. So for example, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're good at short-term scalping, or if you're good at short-term swing and you're making profits, you can do things I'm just going to stay in my lane. I'm happy with that. Or if you're like, well, I'd like to be able to find some things that I don't have to babysit and manage all of the time. And I just want to get some quality. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? That, that leap play becomes, you know, it becomes another part of what you do. It becomes another account. So at any one mm -hmm. given time, I'm moving things from, you know, again, that the big picture to the small picture. So when mm -hmm. I, when I do well, small picture wise, it moves into the longer term. It, it account. feeds the big it, picture. Yeah, exactly. So all of it feeds each other. It's not one thing unto mm -hmm. itself. That's my approach. Not everybody approaches it that way, but that's what's made me successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that creates a pretty good picture of sort of like the background and the necessity for you to come up with this strategy. Like, first of all, it was to, to protect yourself, you know, so you could survive yes. in this game and, 
and and um, you know make a living for yourself but also that it's really hard to to predict right so we're just trying to employ strategies where we don't really need to predict but can put ourselves in a yes. position to be lucky to to catch moves on on different Correct. time frames and i also think that you know playing the short term to feed the long term is really important because long term is where you make the big money right it's like most of the money is made on overnights and longer term swings and holding positions so i think it's uh it's short term is uh using the short term to feed the long term is, is a great way to put it so that paints a really good background so let's actually talk about like so this uh this costco trade like when did you get into that the end of last year was it the beginning of this year i just kind of want to go back to like before you even got into these trades to just talk a little bit about the macro environment before you even yeah, got sure. into that so, um yeah I'll pull up. I'll pull up Costco now. One of the mm -hmm. things that my um, my original mentor before before I came to the steam room. Let me just turn this indicator off because it's it's very busy uh, and it confuses people. So let me get rid of that. So you know, with Costco, what first mm -hmm. of all, I look for things that are if I can make it simple to start with, that helps me because the analysis the fundamental analysis the grinding of um of the numbers the evaluation of the management team the evaluation of you know constantly looking at 10ks etc i'm not mm -hmm. I, i'm I, i'm okay at it but th there are far more talented people who have better acumen they're among the smartest people in the world and that's their that's their job right so mm. If I can look at Costco, I can tell you what Costco is, right? It's it's basically a big box discount warehouse where I can go and buy staples that I need at a reduced toilet price paper. in exchange for, for huge amounts of it, right? Yeah, exactly. Toilet mm -hmm. paper um, or freaking cornflakes, whatever it is, right? <laughs> so that's that's very simple, right? That I understand that, and what I also understand is that it it impacts so many people because people are you know they they have budgets that they have to work with they have to stretch their dollar or they have to go to places where they can get value for you know the the, the time that they've exchanged at work for the money that they receive and the things that they need on a day-to-day -day basis that to me that's very simple right so mm -hmm. um they charge you a subscription for it right you you pay you pay a yearly um, so it's a subscription model. Most people are going to just continue renewing that year after year. And then all of the other things that that you can, you know, get at Costco besides just the stuff, right? I mean, you got the dollar fifty hot dog deal, right? You got um vacations you can go on. They still Costco, they still right? got that dollar fifty hot dog, right? It hasn't hasn't yeah. gone to two two bucks. They, they, two, two they, bucks they yet? say <laughs> they, they say it's not going anywhere. They say they'll always have it. And then I love it. you know, they, they they take great care of their employees. Like all of these intangibles that you know that mm -hmm. that I that, mm -hmm. that for me is easy to digest, mm -hmm. that makes it investable for me, you know, for, for so, the long term. Now, so Costco as a company so as a company, it's just pretty clean, straightforward. You understand yes. the business model, nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing so too that's, that's, ki that's yeah. kind of where I start. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, is it quality and is it at a discount? Well, you know, for, at the time that I purchased, that I got involved in Costco, um, was, was like a year ago, like April of okay. 23. So right? All the way back to april we're talking all the way back yep. to april and i'm just yes. trying to think back real quick we we bottomed in october the year before right so stocks were already kind of like on the on the rice here but cost yes. was consolidated am i remember that correctly it, it was it was consolidating that is correct and it caught yeah. my attention because there were some there were some people who uh followed the stock who were looking at it and they were you know they're like hey we think Costco, and especially um, the one that ca always catches my ear and attention, um, mm -hmm. the guys that don't, that are that are not out there pumping their own book, right? Which is mm -hmm. normal for mm -hmm. most analysts to do. Which is why I have such a problem with a large majority of analysts. They they represent mm -hmm. and they work for a bank. Their interest is is for that organization, not for you, right? So you have yeah. to understand a little bit about their game, but 
there are some people out there talking about, hey, we think Costco is an $800 stock, $850 stock, right? So mm -hmm. that immediately catches my attention. So I, then I just go back and I'm like, okay, well, I learned how to read, you know, technical analysis. So I'm going to look at the weekly chart. And then I'm going to look at the daily. Do I have, you know, what are the technical indicator things that I look for? The 50, the 200, are there insiders yeah. buying? How long has it been, you know, consolidating in a range? I know that from technical analysis, the longer that something consolidates yes. in a range when it finally makes a break, whether that's up or down, it usually has some kind of energy to it. So Costco is a yeah. perfect example of a long this time. This is a really good example. It really is. Good. It's, it's because, so, because. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry to cut you off, but just for the people. So if in the master course, right, we go over this very, very, very detailed, like we spend a, a few days on this and just yep. kind of like quick back of the napkin technical analysis that I've learned from Ron. It's like what I'm seeing here is like I'm seeing range compression basically from like April the year before. Right. And it's kind of yes. creating this like triangle right here that is like that's compressing right and then yep. you have all the moving averages getting really 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 sandwiched right and then you yep. sort of have this like climax uh where it breaks out of that of that triangle and then the moving averages start spreading apart and you have a clean breakout and that base yes. that compression is freaking one year long so it wouldn't surprise yeah. me if during that period you were selling condors above and below that range well, now here's the thing with Costco because it trades at such a high mm -hmm. dollar value. Yeah, it's not it, is, con it, can be, it can be very difficult <laughs> to trade condors on something like mm -hmm. that. And my intention was always to to be long term long on Costco anyway. So for mm -hmm. me, it was like you know, kind of. So I have it was just a timing a, thing. Yeah, and it's more like okay. So for example, um, let's say you have a position size, and in Costco, I have a position size of thirty leaps and it's it's always been 30 um but i i kind of had to leg into it and it was always like all right well if i've got 30 leaps and i get to an mm -hmm. area of resistance do i write 30 30 contracts or do i write five or do i write 10 mm -hmm. it's it's always like a, a little bit of um a massage in those areas especially when mm -hmm. you just get into it because you have to figure out how it trades if you're going to have any success with the short term, right? Because the mm -hmm. long term is more forgiving just based on the amount of time that you have, right? Um, the short term can be very tricky. So I don't want to get caught um, in a full position. So if I write 30 against my 30 leaps, yeah. I could find myself in a very bad position if the stock breaks out and I can't buy back the short term um, contracts at, at, a, at a price that's going to leave me without a loss short term does that make sense right that absolutely that be, makes sense that can be super that can make it can be super tricky i can get away with it more on amazon because it's mm -hmm. it's more liquid and it's easier to maneuver the costco moves in in great big chunks and it, it can it can really hurt you so you have to learn you know kind of where and how what kind of size you can do in certain areas so it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a dance it doesn't that dance doesn't always work right there are times where you don't get it right but long term you're forgiven because the appreciation and the leap if you've found the area where you're going to finally start to move in the direction that you want it to go make sense mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so if we rewind back to to April of twenty three, and when you yep. were, were legging in, what was yes. uh, causing you to pull the trigger? Was there anything you saw in the flow? Was it based on technicals? Was there any sort of like uh, fundamental? Like, what made you sort of like pull the trigger? It's like I'm starting to leg in here. When were you adding? Can you tell us a little bit about just kind of like the initiation of the trade and then the management of the trade thereafter? So yeah. So when I when I first heard, first of all, if you look at the chart. The thing that I find very useful are anchored volume weighted average price. And there are, you know, if you read the book by Brian Shannon, he goes into detail about how he likes to use anchored volume weighted average price. I like to use volume weighted average price on things like extremes. Where was the low? So here's the low back to 2021, um, all the way down at what, 309, right? And you had this move that you know it went from 2021 a low uh and then it peaked out in april of 22 
and retraced. So those things I'm like, all right, I can anchor to that low and then I can mm -hmm. measure that move and I can see from a Fibonacci standpoint, okay, did it, did it come back to an area where it found some support? And, you know, then you get these other areas that you can measure. So for example, this high back in April of 22 and the low in May of 22, that was a dramatic, that was a dramatic move. So I've got an anchor that ties back to 21. I've got a move, a short, shorter term move, but fits inside of the bigger picture. So for me, you know, using technical analysis, if I use that little low and just draw Fibonacci up to mm -hmm. this little area, I can just see, okay, did it pull back? Look at where it pulled back to see the golden line. <laughs> So that's, course, I mean, that is, it, that is an area of Fibonacci retracement that we pay attention to. So I just go mm -hmm. back and look, what did it do? What did it do? Does it make mm -hmm. sense? I see those things and then I see this compression and I see the 50 and the 200 and I've got an anchor here. So what catches my attention? Where do I add? Where do I leg in? Well, do you see these little mm -hmm. pullbacks down to these anchored areas? That's where I'm yeah. legging in. That's where I'm legging yeah. in. So, so those um, are the alerts that you have that sometimes we hear on the stream when something yes, goes off. Exactly. It'll be like an alert on exactly. one of those, and then can be like, okay, I'm I'm gonna put buy ten here, for example. Yeah, exactly. And and that's mm. those are the spots where if you're in the you're in your short term trading, if you're mm. collecting some cash, you're giving yourself when when these moves happen, you're giving yourself some free money to get into more of that position at a, at a discount, right? So if a, if a leap is gonna cost me a hundred bucks um, and I've collected along the way, I've collected 10 grand, 15 grand, 25 mm -hmm. grand, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it reduces to me, it reduces the price of that leap. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm, 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 I'm also getting the leap at a discount because I've created that cash flow along the way. Okay. And were you in your entire position before it broke 500? Were you able to build your position before five or did you add a piece kind of when it broke the 500 level? Um, I, so I was, it, it, when, when we broke, when it finally broke out the first time up here, I was in mm -hmm. 15 contracts and then uh -huh. um, I, I took the profit and um, I added another 15 here at this five, call it 550 ish area. And then uh -huh. All I did, all I did was when, when this, the continuation of the move, I just kept, yeah. I had, a, I had, I had a fib based off of this move. Um, I'll show you. And, and this is what I did. So I put, I used that low and I used this high. And then all mm. I did, you see the little you range the now that forms yeah. with the fib. So as it broke yeah. out, I was like, okay, I'm going to roll. It got to the next fib. I was like, I'm going to roll. It got to the next fib. I'm gonna roll, boom. So I just used the Fibonacci's as saying, "Hey, these are areas where it could be extended. It might need a break. So I'm gonna roll. Mm -hmm. I'll collect the the profit and put it in my pocket, and then I'll look for the next spot." When we got up here, I did, this is the one that I I was saying I'm just gonna wait until we get to 800, and mm -hmm. it never got to 800. But what I did do is the day before earnings, I rolled because yeah. I. I I wasn't sure. And then, you know, there, everybody in the room is like, Costco is like, even if Costco is perfect, it's going to drop and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't even want to, I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to roll and whatever happens, mm -hmm. happens. And that's what yeah. we have right now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's obviously we're looking back at a trade that worked really, really, really well. Right. But it's like, yeah. I think it's yeah. really important to review. I mean, that's what a soccer player does too. When you have a good game or a good match, like you review it to see if you can, you know, take something from it. How can you do that, that again? Right. So this is obviously something that worked really, really well. And I mean, are you able to give us any, like, are we talking five figures, well, the, six figures, seven? The Costco is seven figures. Seven the, figures. Um, yep. The Amazon is, um, the Amazon. Yeah, let's is, take a look at Amazon as well. Let's take a look yeah, at Amazon. The Amazon is six figures, um, but it, you know, it's Only just six? okay. It's just okay. <laughs> well, from a, from a line out, but from a long term <laughs> perspective, you have to remember that I've been, um, and you've seen, I don't show the big account. I have, I have two big accounts, and I don't show that. You've seen it, and you've seen, seen the it. numbers. So, I've seen it. Um, and 
I can just say that the losses in the scalp account becomes what's smaller than insignificant? How, whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. Um, and there, there will come a time where that scalp account um, kicks Negative in, and, I, and, and, I, and, and you know, I, yeah. I will catch eventually, right? It, it that's just how these things go. Um, mm -hmm. And as as I was talking about, one feeds the other. So what happens over time is, you know, these as you're rolling and as you're collecting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that money now comes out of that and it goes to other places where does it go well it goes to to other things like you know we talk about does it you know it goes to real estate right like you buy you buy a house <laughs> you pay for a car um you you take a vacation and at some point when you start to earn enough you get involved with things like private placements or you get involved with um uh you know p um mm -hmm. privately held REITs that are are doing you know offerings um there's a lot of different things that you can get involved with that now that whatever it is that you made here goes to other places and you don't think about it because it's now long term. And then mm -hmm. the idea is that one day in the future, you look and all of these different things, these little gardens that you've planted along the way now become part of a, of a much bigger picture that have built kind of a, a fortress for you. And um, nothing is foolproof, but this is mm -hmm. what I had to do and build mm -hmm. because of how badly I got um, in my in my younger years, right? So yeah. it all and that's that's also that. that's also a part of the strategy, right? When these leaps yes. pay out big, you take the money out of the account, protect that money from yourself, and buy something that's more illiquid per se, like a house right. or. Even yeah, I think like buying right. real estate is just like yeah. Just so it's, so people are like you know it's and it it does take time and especially with smaller accounts, it's mm -hmm. you can't just go do that right. It takes time to build that. But it's like I've got a scalp account, I've got a swing account, I've got a mm -hmm. an iron condor account, and the iron condor account I use as 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 a lot to feed the leap account right. And then in, mm -hmm. within the leap account, you are trading long term, and within the leap account, you're trading. Um, short term against that just that one name, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these different combinations, and then when the leap account makes um, th those gains, it goes into you know those other assets that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, if you like something, you know, um, you know, whatever it is that pays, you know, let's say a dividend, like um, I don't know, you know, pick anything. AT &T. There you go. Okay, right? Like, and then now all of a sudden you have like that longer term portfolio that you you just don't even think about and you you have some equity and then um i think in my opinion the the gem to all of this is mm -hmm. that when we're in a position where you are you you find yourself long super long and you let's say you haven't been rolling or you you just have too much at risk the 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 jewel in all of this is the spy put protection play and mm -hmm. when the VIX is low enough and gives us the opportunity for those long-term crash protection puts, that's the thing that is going to save your ass in a black swan event. Because and that we're not going to give away on this call. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that, so that, if you, that if is, you want to get cool. into the real nitty gritty, then the yeah. master course is... Uh, yeah is the right decision because yes there is more to this too because as you're long the leaps if the environment and the timing provides then you will be protected with either you know some sort of spy puts or or, or vix hedge so i think that's also important to mention but we don't want to give yep. that away what i would love yep. to touch on real quick is the amazon because it looks yep. completely different from costco as far as like the setup goes right so yeah it, where, did, this, where, where did you get I, in I why I lose. And yeah. I do lose on some of these. I do take some of these off early. Um, CrowdStrike is a perfect example of of a to me is a huge miss, right? Huge miss. Mm -hmm. um, you know that one. It hurt uh, more ego 
than anything else just because you know I was in the right spot at the right time I did hold I did do really well on the position but I did miss mm -hmm. the tulip market in that is CrowdStrike right so I did miss the main part of the run the Amazon mm -hmm. has been good it hasn't been great the reason I liked Amazon is because how mm -hmm. many people how many people in the world cover Amazon so it, right it's probably the widest widest covered I'm just making up words now um, it's <laughs> so okay. widely covered it's so liquid and mm. if dan niles comes on twitter and is like i'm getting long amazon like dan there's like maybe three analysts that mm -hmm. i think are not full of shit um mm -hmm. and dan niles is one of those guys so mm -hmm. when he comes on and he's like hey amazon for me is is one of my positions and we like it and he, i think he slapped a 180 price target on it which it's pretty much hit I was like, okay, where was that's that? Good. Where was that? He came up with uh, his uh, coverage on it. Then, oh, so do you do you see my do you see my screen? Is my screen showing? Yeah, so that's your that's your break even. But I didn't know if that was like where you initiated the position or if that's like after. So that's so that's a good so question. That, but so that is in, initiation. In it, so initiation was August of twenty three, and it was after mm -hmm. earnings, and it was when Dan spoke. Yeah. So the you gotcha. can see here, I started the position, and then mm -hmm. where. The break even is this is I've averaged and added to the position. So my break mm -hmm. even currently is in this area right here. And again, same thing. I measured the move. I used a fib and I looked for places to roll. So mm. along the way, so the Costco has rolled up six or seven times, I think. And the Amazon has rolled up. Um, the Amazon's rolled up three or four times. I have to go back and look. Um, so you're still so the yeah, there's so the 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 Costco phenomenal, the Amazon good, right? Good. Crowd yeah. CrowdStrike good, and I left a ton on the table with CrowdStrike. Um, was CrowdStrike a leap or was that a mini swing? No, CrowdStrike was a leap. It was a leap as well. All right. Yeah. So and let me let me pop over to CrowdStrike real quick just to show yeah. you. And one of the things that we look for in the leap strategy, and we teach you this also, is how do we spot insider buying and is it significant enough? What do we consider significant enough to get into a position? So on CrowdStrike, mm -hmm. and I'm waiting for this little chart to catch up, there was an insider buying and there was significant buying. Um, and we followed that insider. And this is where that insider was buying. The insider was buying down here at the 100 area. And <laughs> they you know, print that they, one up, on up his, his three fridge. Four. So, you know, yeah. for me, I, I was looking at, and this is something I normally don't do is buy below the 50 or the 200, but the, it was, mm -hmm. it was so compelling, um, dollar wise that I just wanted to mm -hmm. be involved. I, and I did say, Hey, listen, this is to me, this is kind of a wild card. I'm willing to take a little bit more of a risk. It's not as conservative. And, you know, we had that things that popped it above the, the 50 and the 200. And in my opinion at the time, it was done. It, it had reached an area where I felt like it's just not going to break through this fib area. And um, mm. I'm, I'm going to take my profits and call it a day. And then, of course, what happens, I left from 170, you know, I don't remember exactly where we were exited, somewhere in the 150, 160 area. And then, mm. boom, it runs to 350. So that, that happens. That happens. Yeah, uh, you, can't, you what, can't get these right all the time. What about this bothers you? Is it more from like a kind of like a competitive, just like solve the puzzle type of thing that this annoys you that didn't catch it, or are you like actually thinking about the money you missed out on? I, I think it's I think it's just more. I think it's more than anything. I think it's more ego, right? I think it's mm -hmm. more like hey, yeah. because everybody. Um, in in the back of their mind wants to be like listen dude you need to listen to me i'm right you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. think that that's i think that's a big flaw in every trader's dome right i i i think that's an inherent flaw in ev in everyone i, think so I don't too. think anybody is exempt I think so too. from that right you have um, some of the just, best traders right and they they win two out of ten times but those winners are freaking fat because they huge. stay in them <laughs> you know they right. cut they cut all their losers short so that the eight small losers are you know and then you have two huge winners so i think a lot of people yep. chase a high win rate when yes. your win rate means nothing 
Yep. <laughs> it means zero. That's that is that is true. That is true. And when you do get, you know, those winners, can you stay in them? And I and I think that that's part of, you know, people are mm-hmm. like, well, you fucked up CrowdStrike. It's like, yeah, I did, but look at Costco, right? Look at Amazon. Yeah. You know, in mm-hmm. trades prior to that, like, you know, Biogen was the was was the beta that I had to prove that my shit worked to to Charlie and and Lucci, right? And it and it did. Mm-hmm. We did it at no cost. Um, there were a handful of guys that were in that beta with me and at least two or three of them, you know, made a half a million dollars or more on that biogen trade. So yeah, that yeah, was, I that. That, was the, that was the proof <clears throat> in the pudding that, um, to Lucci and Charlie that, all right, you know, I know what the fuck I'm, I'm doing and what I'm talking about. So a hundred percent. So let's talk a little bit about this. So what do you say to our members out there and even even like me who's thinking like man i really got to pay an attention to you know next time ranch gets into a leap or or a mini swing because because i i want to be i want to be a part of that so it's like for someone who wants to prepare to be able to be a part of this next time do you have any sort of like advice or what do we got to make sure that we if you haven't been through the master course get into the master course because we cover it in detail mm-hmm. and then you'll have access mm-hmm. to those recordings. Um, mm-hmm. The other part of it is that, uh, you know, every Monday and Wednesday, I'm going Mondays, I'm going over the long-term positions and talking about them from a big picture standpoint. And then how were we? So Mondays are lead. So yeah. So Mondays are, if yeah. you want to get into the, the longer term, you have to either be on that um, broadcast <clears throat> or watch the watch the yeah. recording. Okay, so long term positions Monday. That's a that's a good yeah. one to remember. And then I, and then on Wednesdays I go over iron condors and why iron condors fit in. For example, like Illumina, we're mm-hmm. playing with iron condors on Illumina because if we can make money in iron condors along the way on Illumina, when the technicals finally align to where I feel more comfortable getting into that position, mm-hmm. I, I will have generated some cash to get a head start on whatever leaps I'm going to buy. And then, you know, the other things we look at in, in the condor, the reason for the condors is, you know, I, I will trade them on stuff that's stuck moving sideways. For example, mm-hmm. Goldman Sachs, right? Um, mm-hmm. At mm-hmm. some point, I believe Goldman will find a change in direction. I don't know whether that's up or down. It keeps threatening to the upside, but can't follow through. So the iron condor allows me to be in a position and it doesn't force me to be right. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter to me whether it wants to break higher or lower. I can be, I can use an iron condor as a conservative strategy, or I can Mm -hmm. use it as an aggressive strategy. So if I see something trading sideways and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that this is definitely going to break in a specific direction. I just don't know when the iron condor allows me to sit. And when it does break, I can convert the short leg of, of the one position in the iron condor. And now I'm directional from this, the right on, on the puts and the, now I'm long on the calls and vice versa. I can be short mm-hmm. on the calls and then long on the puts, right? It's it, to me, it's the, um, it's the, it's the ultimate way to catch direction and get involved, whether that be long term or swing. To me, it's mm-hmm. to me, it's like the ultimate Swiss Army knife for that type of trading. But you you need yeah. specific things to happen. So, and you're not you're not going to learn that um, just by coming in every Wednesday and listening. You you need to understand the background and the education piece of it as well. So all again, yeah. all of these lead into each other, right? Leap long term, trading short term around it, iron condor. That's kind of a medium term to get into something that's going to be either long term or swing, right? So mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. all feed they all feed into each other. It's one big pond feeding into a smaller pond, feeding into a smaller pond. That's how it works. That's that's a great analogy. Everybody needs uh, all the ponds. Yeah, exactly over time and you might not have the account size to to do what i'm talking about and you Mm -hmm. might be good at one area for Mm -hmm. example i've seen a lot of guys use iron condors 
to build their accounts, mm-hmm. right? I've seen a lot of guys mm-hmm. scalp to build their accounts. And once they've scalped, then they're moving into some of these other um, strategies. And by strategies, I mean literally opening another account. And that's the only activity you do in that account. So for example, mm-hmm. there, you know, I've got long term, then I've got leap, and then I've got yeah. um, swing, I've got short term swing, I've got iron condor, and then I've got scalp, right? I keep those buckets separate. It's easier for me to manage. I don't, I don't want one screen, one account with all of these positions. It's too much for for my brain because of how I know how my brain works. So I separate them. Other people don't have to separate them. That's what I do. And it keeps me out of trouble because I know, hey, the scalp account, I'm only scalping in there. The short term and and these are the smaller accounts. Like the two small accounts mm. has been has been um an experiment to see which one is working. Well, I know that yes. the scalp account is not working, right? But the short-term swing or short-term swing account has been working, right? So, but the scalp account, I'm not going to all of a sudden just decide, oh, I should swing in, in there. It's still going to mm-hmm. stay the scalp account, right? Yeah. But the other one, the small term or the small account that's been swing in this market has performed very, very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can actually show you that account if you want here. So let me show you the other small account. Let yeah, me switch the screen and so that you can see this. Also, for the for the people listening, if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about or anything we haven't talked about, feel free to drop them in the channel to chat. We have one question from Weiss, which is, "How long did it take you to recover from the one point six million loss?" Um, so after that, that was what, 2008? No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, that was nine. Help me out. What nine 11 was nine 11, right? Two, yeah. 2011. Was it was a, was 11, wasn't it? No, wait, no, it was an, wasn't it a, a 90 one, something? 2001. That's really yeah, bad that I don't remember that. 2001. Yeah, but now it now it really is getting further and further away from me. So that was two thousand one. So mm-hmm. I re, from two thousand one to two thousand eight, I rebuilt. But I was I was during that time frame, I was only able to rebuild about eighty thousand dollars because I mean I was literally wiped out. So I had I was working and saving and trying to, you know, hunt and pack and scalp. And in mm-hmm. two thousand eight, when the when when that blow up happened. I lucked out because I wasn't in the market during that time because I was going through a divorce, right? So mm-hmm. all of my shit was on the sidelines. So at mm-hmm. that time, then you know, assets get divided, blah blah blah. That was my that that's where 2008 was where everything took a big turn for me, um, mm. and and that's that's where I started to to rebuild because I was able to buy things at a discount after everything got the living shit knocked out of it right so i had a yep. big stretch of of emptiness financially followed by a divorce which was another nasty thing that happened um mm-hmm. followed by an opportunity to rebuild and and that's you know along the way i acquired the experience and the knowledge to get there so i i didn't have um i didn't just bounce right back Right. And even after my divorce, I didn't just bounce right back. It took a long time. It, it was, it was very, very painful, but I knew I, I, I knew I was never going to reach where I wanted to reach just by working. I needed something mm-hmm. else mm-hmm. or I was, I was never, I was never going to get there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was yeah. never going to get to where I wanted to get without doing something else. And because I was familiar with the market and because I've always loved uh, the market and have a passion for it. That's where I decided I was going to, I was going to make that, make it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never gave up. Um, but it it was for such a long time. I was like, is this ever going to happen? Is this ever going to work? Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have that feeling, I think, because getting trained. Yeah. It, it, getting trained by a market maker was a was a game mm-hmm. changer. Getting trained by Lucci on how to re- read tape was a game changer. Mm-hmm. 
those two mm. things were the game changers for me. And then nice. being able to take all of this experience and knowledge and, and package it is now what you guys get in the master course, at least from me. And then you get Luchi's yeah. experience, then you get Katie's experience, and you get Jesus' experience. Like that's a it's a, a it's years. a big deal. It's a big deal, <laughs> right? And yeah. my yeah. way is not the only way, but what it does do is I think is it helps give you okay, what's the perspective from the big picture? And now can I bring it in? Because a lot of people are just like, just tell me how to make, how, how do I turn 20 grand into a million dollars, right? There's a lot of ways to do it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But I think you should know what those what those concentric circles are and, and how are you even going to have a chance to get there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think... Um that's uh, as as we take a quick look at the other small account. Which what did yeah. you start that one? What did you start? That uh, one? Did you start? So okay, so here's yeah. So right now, um, mm -hmm. so the net gain on this is what seventeen k. Where mm -hmm. is the? Uh, so this is twenty four. Okay, so why doesn't okay, it show? But it, it, Anyway, so we're up 17 grand on, on this account. Yeah. Started at 38, it's at like 55 now. So th we Sorry. started the year at 38,000. So the year prior started at mm -hmm. like 25, right? So it was, it was mm -hmm. two small accounts. I'm like, all right, this one I'll be slow and steady. Built it from 25 to 38. Now it's 38 to just under 56, like 55. Mm -hmm. And then I'll continue this. And um, the, the goal, the idea is... Can I get this to a hundred? And then at a hundred, the way that I approach things will change from the standpoint mm -hmm. of what kind of size can I take? So you can see in this account, like, you know, here's this, um, like what am, what am I scalping? Right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I've got like, there's a, there's a 20 contract size on the NVIDIA, right? Um, like the super micro one contract, uh, the mm -hmm. CELH, was which you know that was a that was a bad trade that was a 10 lot right this gct a 10 lot the Lua five lot the ulta a one lot one <clears> lot <throat> the costco short term a five lot so you you can see i'm like all right well like i'll take these little shots here and there and if i can mm -hmm. catch it over a period of, of of a day or days and i can either roll or i can just collect the profit and look for hey does it pull back so that's been working in, you know, it's been working well in this small account versus the scalp account where I just haven't been very good. I just haven't been very good. It hasn't been, to me, it hasn't been a good scalp environment. It's been a better swing environment. So strategy wise, this one has been a little bit more of like the, the mini swing holding for the day while the other ones has been like quick, quick scalps and and this and I just have that we're good. looking at right now has and, been working yeah, much better. Yeah, it, it, yeah, the, yeah. So you and I have the scalp account up in the, you know, in in the main room. I took a break from it for February, and in March I've started to climb, you know, to climb back in. Um, and mm -hmm. since climbing back in in March, net positive, um, and it's like, all right, can I catch? something that's moving like yesterday it was tesla today mm -hmm. i didn't get follow through right i wanted to see hey it popped up a little bit can i get follow through of move to move a move to the downside it didn't work i took a small loss i'll step aside i'll wait mm -hmm. but then i've got all of these other things going right now so for example in this in this small account uh i'm long nvidia i moved from april to may on the 1000s they have the big event on monday maybe this mm -hmm. th this works but i've given myself enough time that I'm not stressed about the in between. Whereas if I was trying to scalp it, I would be more stressed out. Right. Yeah. That makes total sense. That makes total and sense. I'm, I'm trying to identify what works for me. Other people are going to look at it and be like, Hey, you're a loser. I'm scalping this all day and it's working. That's awesome. It's not working for yeah. me, but I can, I can physically see the numbers on the screen in two small accounts. One, approach is working for me and the other is not so mm -hmm. i stay with the one that's working until i can get the other one that starts to work for me so yep. this keeps it separate um on a piece of pay, you know in a physical account so that i don't make the mistake of oh i'm going to be scalped today and tomorrow i'm going to be like oh now i want to be swing i'm like nope this is how i have to compartmentalize it so if it's not working well for me on on scalp 
I'll come over here and swing. If this stops mm. working, I'll go focus back again on on scalp. Yeah, I think, and I think that also helps with like kind of dealing with the ego, right? Because it's like if you only have one strategy and it doesn't work, then it's easy to just like try to force that onto the market, right? That's like because you yep. want it to work doesn't mean that's going to work in the market today. But if you have yep different strategies you were not so tied into like i hope i'm right because it's like well that strategy didn't work let me try another one so you know yeah. i think that as as traders i almost look at us like we're almost like these athletes right we're almost like these like football players or soccer players that where the strategies are our routes right and the better you yes. are as a trader the 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 better you are at you know creating a plan having a plan and following that plan right whether that plan yep. works or not that's not really that's not really a, for us to, to worry about like your job is to have a plan execute that plan and if the plan fucking worked then it's a great day at, at the job yes agreed and and some people don't like i mean my approach and how i do it is is multi-layered right and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, what what that does for me is to say okay this layer is not working let's go work in the layer that is working and then hopefully mm -hmm. i can come back to the layer that's not working when the market conditions allow it right so that's yeah. what i'm trying to do is identify what's the current condition and does it fit the strategy i cannot come to the market and say this is my strategy i'm going to apply it because mm -hmm. the market doesn't care about your strategy um, your your bias, your thoughts, your technical analysis, your fundamental analysis, it does not care about any of that, right? No, no. But if you don't recognize that, you know, what the market is, is allowing you to do or give you the opportunity to do, and you keep trying to hit the hammer on a square peg in a round hole, it's just not going to go through. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why I have multi layers is to go to when it when it does work. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you for for sharing so much about the strategy itself, but also the re like more of your overall results because I know people definitely have been been interested in that. And if you want to get into the real nitty gritty, like I said, if you want to know more about like how to select your strikes, what delta to go for on these leaps, when to roll, like the different types of rolls we could do, basically like every single little detail on how to manage and deploy the strategy, then, you know, we're going to be covering all of that stuff in the master course. And I do think you can learn this by just being a member, but it's going to take you a long time, man. You're going to have to attend a lot. Like it'll take you a year <laughs> rather than two months to pick up all of this stuff. And if you want to spend a year on something that could take you two months, I don't know, you know, then you might miss out on the next leap. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've taken all of those years of experience and training from a market maker and from Lucci, and the mistakes that I've made, and you know, we're we're kind of condensing it and saving, like Norse just said, we're saving you years of of learning curve. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Ron. I know yep. you probably have some scuba or windsurfing or longboarding <laughs> you want to get out and do now that the sun is slowly but surely starting to rise. I can see <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, let's let's yeah. let's give you yeah let's get let's let's get a let's shot. get a look let's get a look. Right. Yeah, now this now the sun is up. So you can get some motivation, right, to get into the there next leap. Yeah, that's beautiful. There's there's your sunrise. That is it's beautiful. Yeah, let's see. Oh, that's over Mauna. That's Mauna Loa right there. Time to oh, put sorry. on a right fresh there. pot that's, of Kona coffee. That's Walalai right there. Look at that sunrise. Yeah. Isn't that nice? And then looking out over Mauna Kea. Wow. Yeah, not bad, right? Not bad at all. I do love it here. Yes, we can see. We can see why. Well, thanks again, Ron. Enjoy the no rest worries. of your day and enjoy your weekend, and we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Later.